Welcome in, Iowa Hawkeye fans, to another episode of the Hawkeye Tailgate Report. I'm Big Takes Myers. Joining me, we got all four of us this week. Austin Myers, Joey Myers, Sam Middleton. Fellas, we're, we suck at basketball right now. <laughs> oh, what? An Iowa basketball team being fucking awful at the end of the season? Never heard that storyline before. <laughs> yeah, I've been pretty brutal. We have... We're fucking crawling right now to the finish line. We got smoked by Wisconsin last week. We blew a huge lead against Nebraska. But we'll start with that Wisconsin game because that was very predictable and just the most... I wasn't even really disappointed. I just kind of figured it was coming. I literally stopped watching at halftime and played Fortnite. (laughs) It was so... I watched... I watched... So that game was so bad. I was watching it at the bowling alley and I thought it went to halftime and I turned around and started watching a women's game on another TV because I thought it was at halftime here. I turned around. The game is actually just going to halftime now. And there's when I stopped watching it, there's five minutes left in the first half. That's how bad that was. <laughs> it, yeah. That game was just like, it was just terrible from tip until the final buzzer. Uh, I'd watched the entire thing because I'm a dedicated podcaster and I wanted to be able to talk about it the whole time. Oh my but, god, uh, nerd! I, I should get an award for that. But you should, uh, like, I don't even know. Heart. You should, like be put in a mental asylum or something. Yeah, no, it was tough. Everybody else in my family stopped watching approximately five and a half minutes into the game. It was terrible. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Go. Fucking Ethan Happ is a 43 percent free throw shooter on the season. And he hit, like, 70% of his free throws that game. That pissed me off more than anything. Like, we could have played terrible the entire time. I don't care. The one big white dude on their team that I can't stand, who sucks at free throws, who at one point this season missed 13 consecutive, made, like, 70% of his free throws against us. If that's not, like, the most Iowa thing to happen of all time, I don't know what is. I would like to blame Sam for his success against the Hawkeyes this year because, like, the first podcast Sam was on, he called him, like, the most overrated player in the nation. <laughs> and he's Still fact. He had t- yeah, still no. Fact. He t- that's that's not incorrect. He is overrated. People do love sucking him off. Yeah, but he just he just railed us this year in the two games he faced us. And like I only watched the first half of the game because I had tickets to go see Captain Marvel and I Nerd. Yeah, the first half the first half sucked. <laughs> a little overrated by the way. Captain Marvel I thought it was a very good movie, but I w- w- we'll, we won't talk about that right now because I don't think the other two guys in here like it very much. I haven't That's seen correct. it. Yeah. All right. Talk. So, but like the offense was bad in the first half as usual. And like we were playing right into Wisconsin's hands. It was just like a disappointing first half. And I didn't really feel too bad not watching the last 20 minutes of the game. But I don't know. It was just disgusting to watch. Cook pissed me off once again in the first half. McCaffrey still really didn't do good in the first half. It, you First half or the entire game? Because well, entire game. This would be a more accurate statement. Well, I only watched the first half. Remember that. So he he oh, did right. Right. Well, he, let me let me inform you. He didn't play any better in the second half, except for the fact that he hit a garbage time three as time expired for us to only lose by twenty instead of twenty three. How about maybe? You just, yeah, McCaffrey. Yeah. How about maybe you just uh, save those for you know I don't know during like when it actually fucking matters. That'd be cool. He made two threes that game. I'm pretty sure it was two at least, or maybe he made one in Nebraska as well. I don't know. The one, was the one that didn't matter anyway, just cut the deficit by three points. So, yeah, oh yeah, I made two threes, but one of them also happened when nobody was defending me because the game was over. So, yeah, whoop de doo uh, Did anybody actually think we were going to beat Wisconsin in here? No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I called it our last, the last week, the week before. Mm. Well, actually, well, I. I had us win by one. I, yeah, yeah, I had us by two. So, like, it, that was a I pity, guess, too, though. Yeah. I predicted us to beat Wisconsin right after the Michigan game when we were actually not a flaming sack of shit. Um, but I also yeah. didn't think that we were going to lose another game for the rest of the season because I was delusional off that high. But leading into that game, I had absolutely zero faith that we were going to win it, which is why I bet was. Wisconsin to win by 12. That was just like one of the most disgusting sentences I've had to say in my entire life. There's just nothing good about betting on Wisconsin athletics. Kind of like kissing your sister. 
Just wrong every way that you look at it. Unless you, you know hot. what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It was a miserable game. Gary Dolphin wasn't there. Fran McCaffrey wasn't there. And with the, the Dolph curse is alive and well. Hey, we fucking suck when Dolphins not calling. The yeah, games. that's not even like. That's not even like a an argument. Like it's factual. Weird. Yeah. Garbage Gary, when he's not there. Gary Barta hates the University of Iowa. Plain and simple. Yeah. That's the only way to put it. Yeah. Well, the Dolph curse may be alive and well, but I don't think if Jesus Christ himself was playing for us that night that we would have won. That like that was just like a continuation of the two games prior to that where we just came out and like from the tip just showed zero energy or want to be there. Which is sad because like right away, I think Bohannon had the first points of the game for us. He hit a three and I'm like, all right. Bohannon's playing Wisconsin. He's got his big nuts back. He's going to drop like 30 points, be like seven of eight on threes. And then pretty much every second of the game after that was miserable. All right. Yep. All right. So. Moving on. We sucked that game big time. <laughs> kind of not a shocker. Wisconsin's always kind of a pain in the ass at the Kohl Center. But then we go to Nebraska, arguably the worst team in the Big Ten, and Thinking you can get your mojo back a little bit before the Big Ten tournament. Fran's back off his two-game suspension for calling the official a cheating motherfucker, which wasn't far off. But uh, is correct. And we speak, <laughs> speaking of being cheating motherfuckers, I just saw an article today about how uh, in the uh, 2013 Big Ten tournament, when Iowa got absolutely fucked by the refs against uh, Michigan State. State. Oh, yeah. fuck, I remember that game. I watched the beat up. Yeah, I, I forgot about it, and then I saw that today, and then I looked at some highlights, and it just made me sad. And, like, it was so bad. Like, fans can complain about the refing all the time, but it was so bad that after the game, the Big Ten, like, head of officiating straight up said, yeah, that was a really horribly officiated game, like, towards Iowa. And then one of the officials that was, like, calling that game didn't get assigned to another Iowa basketball game for the rest of his career. That's how bad he was. Good. I remember Tom Izzo after that game was saying how the Hawkeyes were a tournament team because we were on the bubble that, that year, and I think we were like a three yeah. seed in the NIT. Probably would have made it if we would have won that game. Yeah. Is that the year we – is that Dayton year? That's We went all the way to the Final Four in the NIT. We won at Virginia. Championship game, wasn't it, against Oregon? No, we lost to Baylor. We lost to Baylor. The year before, we lost to Oregon in the second round of the NIT. And Eugene Dev Marbles went off too. Was... All right, but living in the speaking of Dev Marble, he's gonna get our boy Ethan Hat back next year. Don't worry, because Ethan ain't sniffing the NBA or G oh League. no, gosh no, he he's worse like <laughs> was... worse than Cook at shooting the ball. He's bad at it. Was so exciting seeing Marble on two uh, K, but then if you looked, he was actually the lowest rated player in the entire game. His first, so uh, his first game for the Magic. Be done like that. His first game for the Magic, he had four steals though. Defense is overlooked in the NBA anymore, I tell you. But uh, so get Mike Giz- uh, Gazelle in, in the NBA. Hey, don't you <laughs> knock Mike. Mike is like I'm not. He's good. Defender. If he would ever want to come on the podcast, he's like my dream guest. <laughs> Fucking love Mike Gazelle. He sucks. Oh, come I'd on. make sure he'd be absent that week. I hope he. He skypes his shirts off too. No, I'm <laughs> All right, so living in—I forgot we were recording. My bad. Back to the <laughs> presents. Present. Uh, we went to Nebraska and played well for 35 minutes, offensively, defensively. Fran was back. Everybody was happy, and then they just turned up the sliders and fuck. N- Nebraska didn't miss the rest of the game, and the rest is kind of history. So, any thoughts here? You know, after like. The third made three in a row, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. They're going to do it. Like, up until then, I was like, okay, we're going to win this game. Like, I was confident. I was like, we're good. We're totally fine. And then the third three went in. I was like, oh, my God. These guys are not going to miss the rest of the game. And they didn't. I'm pretty sure they closed the game like seven of eight or something. They scored six. Like, it, it, it sounds, they scored it six. sounds crazy, but, like, after a while. Go ahead. They scored 16 points in the final minute. I just want to put that out. Yeah, and it was one of those things where, like, after, like, the first five, I was just sitting in my chair laughing, and I'm, like, almost wanting them to keep making them just because it was so unreal. Like, I I wasn't even mad about that game. I just didn't have any words. Yeah. Yeah, I I wasn't mad either. 
It was just. We did LOL. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I kind of just assumed that we were going to lose that game from the get go because that's just how I've been playing. And then I was like, oh, wait, maybe we actually remembered how to play basketball. And we were up by, uh, like, I at one point, we were up by 16 points in the second half. And then they just started hitting three after three after three. And then we just kept trading twos for threes. And we missed some key free throws down the stretch. It was just obscene. And then some guy for them, he, he hit two threes. He was shooting 17% on threes this season. And he hit two in a row. Uh, it was, I don't even know. Tim Miles must have, like, sold his soul to the devil or something. Because, like, especially, he's pr- probably getting fired after this season. So he tr- had to try to do something to be like, all right, I need to do something to save my job. Sold his soul to the devil. And they made that stupid, crazy comeback. It just, it sucked. And we missed, like, so many free throws in that game. Tyler Cook was, like, 3 of 9 or something like that, or, like, 4 of 10. That's not going to cut it. And then uh, Connor McCaffrey uh, missed a free throw, like, right at the end that would have put on their last possession when they hit the 3 to tie it. McCaffrey missed a free throw that would have put us up by 4. That could have sealed the game. And then... Um, in our last possession in overtime when we needed that three to tie, what in the hell was that like play that we ran? Because McCaffrey dribbled the ball up the court and then literally just like dribbled around for four seconds, did nothing, and then picked up his dribble like kind of at the top of the key with nobody to pass it to, and he just held the ball above his head and another like four seconds ran off the clock and we had to call a timeout. Like, it was just such a wasted play. Like, I cannot... I refuse to believe that that's something that they had called up as like, this is how we're going to get the shot to send the game into double overtime. Well, that, but that final play uh, was actually a really good play. If Bohanna would have pump faked, he would yeah. have had a wide open look. Yeah. Yeah. The very play when that but side was like one two where, and a half seconds. After he looked like really a drawn really up, great girl. Yeah. Well, if you go when we, if you could, inbound from the other end, that was just miserable. If you guys don't remember, that's how basically the Northwestern game ended, too. Like, McCaffrey bought, brought the ball up the floor and then threw it off of the foot of a Northwestern player after dribbling it for a few seconds. And then, I, I, but the play for Andrew up after that, this past game, I thought was, yeah, great. Great play call. That was money. Great yeah. off-ball action. People thought for sure you were going to set a screen for Bohanna to come around up top like the Northwestern play. But, I mean, that was a great play call just in fall. Uh, I I don't – it's like an odd feeling. Like in the past I would have been pissed about a loss like that, but I was I was very indifferent. I It's – at this point, it's just what you come to expect under Fran McCaffrey. He's like – he's taught us two things in his tenure at Iowa. One, he's not very good at recruiting guards. And number two – you're going to fade at the end of the season. Like, that's just how it happens. Those are the only things that he's consistently proved as the head coach of Iowa. How many years have we had to deal with this where you have a hot start and you have really high expectations in January, and then it comes to March, and you suck? He's, I mean, he's got a losing record in the month of March as the Iowa head coach. It's like the worst possible time in the season that you can be playing terrible basketball and consistently, under his leadership, Iowa has been playing bad basketball in the month of the season where it means the most to be playing good. All right. Yeah, why, why does he continually get a pass? That's what I want to know. Right. I mean, his first two seasons, he probably had, like, bad March records. I'll pass because he had to try to resurrect us from Todd Lick Lighter. Those seasons don't really count. But since then, I mean, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over, having bad defense, not doing the best job recruiting guards, and then fading at the end of the year and expecting different results. And I think people are kind of getting complacent about it. I mean, we came off of a 14-win season last year, and Gary Barta extended McCaffrey for, like, three more years or whatever and made his buyout, if we were to fire him, up to, like, $10 million dollars. There's no world in which McCaffrey deserves to have a $10 million buyout on his contract. And that's, Fran's bank and that's, <laughs> that's why he'll never be fired either, because that buyout, it's so big. But uh, let's do the panic meter now, because last week Joey put it at 9.9 out of 10. 
I I think Austin put it at like eight, eight and a half, and I was right around there too, maybe. So Joey, kick it off here. We're still at nine point nine, or we we bang in that ten. Ah, uh, no, we're we're lower this week. I'm I'm watching the uh, Illinois Northwestern game right now, and I think that's what lowered me because these teams fucking stink. <laughs> so I'm I'm thinking we're gonna be playing at least two more games before the tournament. So. You oh yeah I was gonna I was gonna make you could like Luke next time you're in like Des Moines if we win you can slap me as hard as you want if we win deal <laughs> two games if we win two games I'll let you kick me in the nuts <laughs> yeah all right uh Joey what's your number that being said we are going with a seven oh Jesus I've lowered, I've lowered it two point nine. Because then we play that fucking douchebag Michigan school, which it shouldn't be too tough. We already beat them once, so. You're telling me you're, we're coming off of two consecutive losses, one where we got blown out, and the other one in heartbreaking fashion, and you've dropped your panic meter by... Uh, I was undefeated nine. on a neutral floor, just saying. Ooh, <laughs> facts. Pretty small sample as well. Plus, well, we got Dolph and Fran back, so. No, not Dolph. No, okay. no, no Dolph. He's suspended for All right, not Dolph. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got Fran back anyway. No, oh, that didn't do us a whole lot of good at Indiana, or not Indiana, Nebraska. All right, um, Stan, where are you at? All the way to ten. Actually, you know, it's not even panic at this point. It's just like a, it's more like a disappointment meter at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. Because like it was a panic meter earlier in the year where like we could have like turned around and salvaged this slide. But at this point, it's it's like it's not panic. It's just like impending doom. Like I just feel like I know what's going to happen at this point. But I I'll put it all the way at the top because I just don't foresee us like turning things around in a like successful manner. Yeah, so we'll go with ten. Sam, uh, six point nine. Nice, nice. We'll uh we'll 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 lose tomorrow, and then we'll uh we'll lose first round. And then, uh, yeah, but we made the NCAA tournament, right? So cool. See, I don't even think we're locked into that. What we have one, I, we have one good win. Our non-conference is non-existent basically now, and uh, our loss bad. We have some bad, bad losses. Rutgers at home is a miserable loss. Nebraska on the road's a it bad just, loss. It's stupid losses. I think that we're still a lock to make. I mean, we're coming out of the Big Ten, which is like the most or second most difficult conference in America. We finished league play 500 and we have 21 wins. I mean, if that doesn't lock you into the NCAA tournament, I don't know what will. I mean, every projection that you look at, nobody's even like talking about Iowa as being a bubble team. I I refuse to believe that the, that we're missing the tournament at this point. Yeah, do we it, deserve to get in? Absolutely not. Will we get in? Yes. What do you, you know? What, it's what do you think about all these people? Sorry, Austin. What do you think about all these people bitching about, like, who was it, Murray State and whoever they played the other night? People were like, oh, these two teams should be in. And, like, Chris Hassel was saying, one of these teams deserves to be in over Iowa. Do you really believe that? No. 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 Put any of those teams in the Big Ten for 20 games a year. They're going to have. It's like Western Christian Hole playing, like, a a 1-8 or a. 1A or 4A schedule all year and then play or wait and then going down and playing 1A in the state tournament that that's backwards but you get what I'm trying to say yeah yeah no it's disc- yeah yeah like well I was watching Bradley you and I and Bradley had 17 points in the first half and they had like 19 like three minutes into the second half and they ended up winning but can, can you imagine them going up against a team like Michigan it just wouldn't wouldn't even be worth watching Anything can happen in the tournament, though. Oh, shut it. All right. I love March. Hey, Next well, weekend. was the final weekend. four. Anything can happen. All right. I'm going to put my panic meter. I think it was at like eight, seven and a half, eight. I'll keep it right there because our offense woke up the other day, which was really nice to see, and our defense played well up until the final two and a half minutes of the game. I th- Hopefully our offense is here to stay. One thing I still am very concerned about is our – uh rebounding because the nebraska game started the other day and i think joey you were the one that texted me this 
is, yep. you said, is it just me or does Nebraska have three offensive rebounds on their first three possessions? And they did. They like we just can't block out, and I don't know why. No, like people refuse to put their asses on people and make sure they got a man so the ball just doesn't fall right into their hands. But I'm gonna. Hopefully the offense offense keeps clicking and can carry us a little farther here. Uh, Want to do the shotgun bet of the week now, fellas? Sure. All righty. So last week Joey and I lost. Joey was Iowa. Thought I would win by one. I will win by one. I thought I would win by Did two. Not. And the douchebag Austin Myers picked Wisconsin to win by twelve. And I don't even. I don't feel good. Uh, and they won about one by twenty. Uh, uh, and Sam wasn't here for the last couple weeks. He's actually new to the shotgun bet of the week. So we'll get to our picks after we finish our beers here. Let just let me get a crack. I actually um, I did some grocery shopping this week. I got some Bush Light rather than that no old old oak sixty six or whatever. Hey, it's some, I think it's the number was actually sixty three. I got some blue goodness as well. Well, you guys can. Um, do your pick. Yeah, once while we're doing once this. Joey and I crack. All right, Joey, you ready? All right, are you still? F- um, yep. You ready? Three, two. So this week for the shotgun bet of the week, instead of uh, picking Iowa to win by a certain number of points or lose by a certain number of points, we're doing uh, how many games do we think Iowa is going to win in the Big Ten tournament? Uh, Earlier today, I was thinking zero for sure, because we're playing so terribly. <laughs> but I'll give us I'll give us one pity win against either Northwestern or Illinois, but no more than that. So uh, one win in the Big Ten tournament. That's my prediction. Ain't so, no way in hell. Some white dude's gonna hit eighteen threes tomorrow. We're not winning. <clears throat> I'm guessing it's gonna be that guy with that miserable last name for Illinois. I was just trying to read it before. Probably hasn't shot a three all year. (laughs) Yeah. So you're putting it at zero. Austin, you're at one. Joey? Yes. Two. We're going to beat Northwestern and then Michigan. Michigan will take a shit on our face. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Hey, like. If you're into that kind of thing, I count it as a win. Like you said, I was undefeated on neutral floor, Sam. Keep that in mind. Against garbage teams. Hey. You. What what do UConn finish the season? Yeah, I don't know. I'll do some research. It's nine and forty. They're usually really. They felt good at the time. They are not good wins anymore. They're usually good for a late, a deep AAC run though, and like pull something out with uh, Kemba Walker on their team. Yeah. Whoa, Kemba was vintage Big East. Do not ever disrespect the Big East like that again. <laughs> That Big East was my favorite. On the oh, no, I loved that old Big East. I used to watch that tournament during Spanish class in high school. I was watching Pitt, UConn, when Kemba hit the <clears throat> step back three at the buzzer. Oh, man. that UConn's 15 and 16. Hey. All right. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. That's the, what year of the girls and... I talked to graduated high school. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, for my bet of the week, I'm, I tweeted it earlier today, partially joking, but I don't know. I, Iowa, the 2001 Iowa team was the first team to win four games in four days, and the 2019 Iowa team is going to do it again. Four games, four days. We're going to lose to – or we're going to beat Michigan State in the Big Ten title game. And uh, yeah, got some. Your delusion. I got. What the fuck are you smoking? I got some high, high hopes, fellas. I'm drinking the Kool Aid again. I'm feeling it. It's, it. Oh, I'm, I'm ready for it. You guys are all gonna look like fools when. Oh. We need Matt Gatons, prime Matt Gatons, to come back and shoot like he did in those that three game stretch. Mm, no. And Woody, we need all his putbacks. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I loved. We're gonna do it. We're gonna. I th- I think best buzzer beater of all time Adam Woodbury against Temple Joe Wieskamp or Bohanna. <laughs> hey, don't forget about the alley oop pass most, that set most... up that game winner. Luke, that was a terrible. <coughs> you know it. Most skillful Woody for sure. Uh, I don't know. Give me Wieskamp. <laughs> give me Wieskamp or give me death. Also, nah, Wieskamp wasn't skill. That was all luck. Joe Joey says that 
uh, Wee's camp is going to become like a verb in the Big Ten tournament. So my four games in four days is looking a little more likely now. Kids are going to be in their driveway yelling, Wee's camp. Joe's going to need to have a sporting for. game. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to need strong offensive performances from our starters, which we got the other day. But uh, moving on here. Or wait, we'll, we'll, t- we'll talk this here. What do you think the chances are in the Big Ten tournament then? Realistically. Like if you had to put a percentage. What do I- our chances are of winning the Big Ten tournament? Yeah, put like a percentage. I know Sam is zero. <laughs> so, but Just because like our players presumably are going to have a pulse and actually be on the court, I'll give us a 1% chance. But even that's probably a bit high. I just have... I have no faith. It just no. We're not winning the Big Ten tournament. One percent, five percent. All right, I'm gonna give it like I'll go like an eight percent chance. You just predicted I mean, them to win it all, and you're hey, sticking with eight. Yeah, I am covering all grounds here, Austin. I mean, realistically, if we beat Michigan. Who else do we have to beat? Purdue, Michigan's the toughest team. Michigan State. Yeah, they're they're, they're fucking chumps. I think we're going to... Yeah, well... They pummeled us this season, the both of them. <laughs> hey, mm-hmm. hey, Austin. There, yeah, so we're due. Miracles have happened. We're clicking again. That Nebraska game, even though you we know lost. how hard it is to beat a team three times? That's what they say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It is it's impossible. Bad. It's never happened. <laughs> so... Did we play Illinois twice or just once? Once. Once. We beat them by fucking 80, I think. 20, but yeah. It was close to 80. I think it was actually 15. But, uh... No way. 15 had to be. Uh, all right. Moving on. We're moving from the future Big Ten champs to the current Big Ten champs. The Iowa women ripped off a steamer the last week in Indianapolis. Whoever just said Cleveland steamer is grow up. All right. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, but the, Not a chance. the women rolled through the Big Ten tournament, beating two of the three best teams in Maryland and Rutgers. Uh, Gustafson, 47 points or 45? 47. 47? Five. I, it's, Four. it's somewhere in between Five. her career high and 45. 45. It was 45 because her career high was 48. Okay. And she, wow, what a bum. She couldn't yeah, get what that. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. She <laughs> had it with like five minutes left. 47 and a half time. Yeah. yeah, come on. Like, really? But no, the women. Yeah. Get a huge win. I, for some reason, I really just can't stand the University of Maryland. Like, it drives me nuts. I've been in arguments with some of their fans over Her women's coach basketball. Like big, biggest bitch ever. Who? Like, it's funny. Their coach. This cowboy texted me that exact same thing. He goes, Maryland's coach just looks like a bitch. That's what I said that too. <laughs> Seriously. She did. Why would you look like play Phoebe? Yeah. I, she looks like Lisa Kudrow. Like Phoebe of Faye. Yeah. I'd hit it though. Okay. Oh, sure. All right. So, y'all got any comments about this tournament run, Big Ten champions? No, I think that if, if um if Gustafson has like a basketball camp in the offseason, I think Cook and Garza both need to attend for certain. Her spin move, her spin hook, like it, it doesn't ever miss. And as you well know, <clears throat> Cooks misses often. So, hey Sam, hang up the phone, pal. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, amateur hour. All right. Was I on the screen twice? No. No. Just no. Me. Oh, that's lame. Uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? Yeah, I agree with Joey. The uh, Iowa men's post players could definitely learn something from Gustafson on the post because she just puts people through a clinic down there. I mean, she it's not just like one go to move that she has either. It's a variety of a bunch of different things. Like she, and she has like some mid range. Tyler Cook should just spend his entire off season like doing post moves with Gustafson because let's be honest, like unless Cook is like at the rim, he's really not that good. He could learn a lot from her. Um other she doesn't miss. Her. Yeah, she she's shooting seventy percent from the floor this season. It's obscene. Well, averaging 28 points a game. So it's not like she's not shooting it that often. Like, she's putting the ball in the air a lot, and it goes in way more often than it misses. It's crazy. The fact that, like, people are trying to make an argument for somebody besides her as being the National Player of the Year, it's ridiculous. She leads the country in points per game with 28. She leads the country in field goal percentage at 70%. 
and she's third in the country at uh, with in rebounds per game. It's at like thirteen point four, and she's second in the country in double doubles this season. Like it's not even close when you try to compare her with other people. But then like after that Big Ten championship game, ESPNW came out and tweeted Mary Gustafson with like forty eight five points in like the championship game. I don't understand how like ESPNW, the ESPN account that's like specifically about promoting women and women's athletics gets like that name wrong. I just don't understand yeah. how like, one job. Like, how how do they have a typo? What in the fuck? It wasn't even a close <laughs> typo. Also, Austin, you don't have a Twitter. It's not a typo though. Like they just like they want with the complete wrong name. Yeah. I don't understand that. It's not a typo. I don't know. But um, it's forgiven on my yeah, they, they corrected it, but it still took them, like, a couple hours to do it. But, uh, like, the, not on, the whole Iowa men's team could learn, like, watching the women break a full-court press is one of the more impressive things I've ever seen. Because, like, they never, ever get stuck. They get the ball in quick, and they make passes. Whereas Iowa's breaking full-court pressure consists of getting it to Bohannon or McCaffrey and trying to set one or two screens for him to cross half-court. That drives me absolutely insane. The women are fun to watch on offense because they move the ball, and like, rarely are they stagnant. I mean, people can say the style they play isn't very exciting, but they're putting up points, and they're doing it very effectively. They're one of the best teams in the nation right now, so you can't argue with the results. I, the, the run they put yeah. together is awesome. And like, I saw something about Lisa Bluter's contract, or something about how Fran got an extension in, with 14 wins last year. And Lisa Bluter hasn't had an extension in like four years or something like that. If any- no, that's not right. That that was fact check. Oh, okay. Well, old takes exposed. Also, there. she gets uh, go find Scott documents. Tweet on it. Okay, I will. Also, fact of the matter is, the men's basketball program it makes money. The women's probably doesn't. Also, the men's does not make money. They bring in more money than any other program aside from football but the the only profitable sport at the university of iowa is football okay but basketball men's basketball still has to be way above women's basketball well yeah but i'm well speaking of back to women and quit shaming them you sexist bastard <laughs> yeah, it's Joey, a fact. doyle chick can ball yeah that she girl can. can play on my pickup team any day yeah yeah mm. i uh sharked the hell out of mackenzie meyer he did yeah. yeah, she was – I don't know if she was up until that game. I was saying it, but it, I know up until very close to that game, the championship She's missed two. Game, okay, so it was very close to that uh, championship game. She was shooting 100% on free throws for the season. And what? She, yeah, it was – How many attempts? It was like 40-plus. So, like, not a huge number, but it's not like an – That's it's, pretty fucking good. Either. Yeah, it's a lot of free throws. And she got fouled and was shooting two, and she went up to the line to go to Joey. She's shooting 100% on free throws this season. Immediately goes to short one off the front of the rim. As what like, the fuck yeah. is wrong with you? Yeah, did I, she? Did she? Her. Did she break Chris Street's record? If so, well, shame yes. on her. Yeah, <laughs> that's real classless. What was Joey, she would thinking? You quit shaming them. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, the. The university already started started selling tickets uh, for the NCAA tournament for the women's, even though the the selection show hasn't happened yet for them. And it only costs, I think, like I think a session costs sixteen dollars to get into the NCAA tournament. Where I got an all sessions pass in Des Moines for next weekend, and it cost me three hundred dollars. That's a, how many tickets you get? Well, no, no right, well, Luke. that's five games, I think. But still, five or six. You got, games. An, you got an extra one on you. <laughs> Actually, I might. We can talk about that after. Only more. Yeah, well, we can talk about that after. But oh, right, we're still recording. Sorry. Yeah, no. Um, uh, but yeah, so like, there's no excuse for Iowa fans to not show up to that. No, I think that it'll be probably very close, if not a sellout, because for Senior Day, they had like thirteen thousand plus fans. Oh, it'll it'll and sell out. I'm sure. Being a two seed in the NCAA tournament, like. We're going to lose some Middle Tennessee State JUCO technology of university. <laughs> Carver's definitely going to be rocking for that, though. Um, one other thing, just like a note from 
that uh, championship game. Uh, did you guys see uh, Nia Dave just get an elbow, like, square between the eyes? And then she, like, went out on the bench. I thought for sure she had a concussion. And then she was on the bench for, like, a minute and a half. And they're like, they just did, like, one little test where they, like, put the, her, their finger in front of her eyes. And, like, yep, she's good. Ran her back out on the court. Yeah, I saw that. She's she's short, but she plays, like. She's 5'3". She, she's, and she balls out. She's strong and aggressive, and I love it. I love that. And Who are we talking about? Tanaya Davis. Tanya? Tanya? I, wanna, I always want to say Tanya. <laughs> Tanya Davis. Yeah, me too. She's, her, she's got a nice stroke too. That, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but like <laughs> everybody is like Meyer, Doyle, Tanai Davis, they can all shoot. And like once you have Gustafson and uh, Hannah Stewart down low, like it's basically yeah. game over because you can play inside or outside. And it, it's a very well put together team. I mean, obviously they run through Gustafson. She's averaging 28 points a game, but like there's 30, scores all over that floor for them. They're very well balanced. They could, they could make like an elite eight run. I think they will. They will. I, I, Austin's got a huge crush on Mackenzie Meyer. Dude, I've got a huge crush on the entire team. Are they all taken? <laughs> I don't know. I, not all of them. My my best one of my best friends dated uh, Megan Gustafson's sister. Oh, Megan Gustafson for she's, like a year. She's the goat. Yeah. I she, like if they make a deep run. In the tournament, how far away is she from like three thousand career points? Is that like she, a possibility? Uh, or? She's just past the twenty seven hundred mark. Like I think the okay. last game, yeah. So yeah, she'll just need to average like eighty four a game, but she'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not points away, in not like, doable. Well, she's only points away in what a maximum like six games. So, six games, yeah. three hundred points, fifty a game. Anything's possible, right? So you're telling me there's yeah, a chance. So <laughs> watch out, Wilt. No, but yeah, so <laughs> women, Big Ten champions. Hasn't been a long time since we could say that about a basketball team. So Since, uh, what, 2004 was the last time? 2005-2006 season, the men's team won it with Bruner, Horner, Haluska, Hansen, <laughs> Doug Thomas. Rip. Doug Thomas. We have won three times. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Never mind. 12 years. Sorry. What was that, Joe? We've won three times in the Big Ten tournament in the last twelve years. Hey, that's that seems high. I remember one, and I remember it was against Illinois when I was a sophomore at D Max. So 2011, 2012, we won against Illinois. What are the other two? Uh, Northwestern, I don't know. I don't know. Northwestern, and Illinois last year. It's just absurd. Wow. Those How are just do that? some powerhouse. We won two games last year. No, no, no. Northwestern was in like twenty fifteen. Like maybe White senior year or something, and then Gaten senior year. Yeah. No. Yeah. We won a game in 2013 because then we played Michigan State and yeah, got yeah, bent yeah. over by. Yeah, but uh, we'll move on here to one of our only segments, and it's thoughts from space. Austin, what a space cowboy got for us this week? Uh, as always, he's got some good content. Uh, so. <clears throat> We'll just uh, we'll we'll go with it. Uh, okay, uh, you're watching that, aren't you? Mm-hmm. The Warriors game. Luke? Yeah, no, I'm not. I but I fucking knew what it you was. See that footback? No, I wasn't watching. <laughs> Dip shit. All right, Austin, All right. go. Hey, shut up. My segment, okay. All right. Thoughts from space. Be- uh, to be honest, I went to Captain Marvel and missed the Wisconsin game. Great call. I'm pretty sure I sent their JV team to Wisconsin on accident. I'm still not sure what happened against Nebraska. I don't know how we get lost after. I don't get how we lost after rewatching it. I think Tim Miles did some Twilight Zone trickery witchcraft bullshit. Panic meter exploded two weeks ago, and at this point, I just want to win a Big Ten tournament game or two and try to get out of that eight to nine game. That solidifies death. I'm taking Michigan as my smart pick and Nebraska for my Iowa State intelligence pick. <laughs> women <laughs> women saved my Sunday as I was starting to become quite intoxicated after the basketball and wrestling disappointment. Uh, um, men, okay, uh, sorry, got lost there. Uh, final thoughts. Iowa loses to Illinois, wins first round game, and then loses to a number one seed by 36 points. Much like the year we ran into Villanova. Women make Sweet 16. Kentucky, who I thought was having a down year, wins it all 
and this offseason, 10, pro- 10 programs get major violations. Joey gets in a fight, resulting in being jumped in Padre. More staples in the head. Padre 2, Joey 0. Stin still gets laid to a large ethnic woman. What happens in Padre stays in Padre, except herpes, which are brought back to Iowa City. If you're looking for a team to root for when Iowa isn't playing, join me in Terrier Nation and cheering on Wolford College. Ugly ass colors, pretty ass basketball. Some good thoughts right that. there. So uh, yeah, you two are heading down. <laughs> That's like what's bugging Andy, but better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you two heading down spring break again. Uh, Joey, pray for us. What? Are we still recording? Break? Yeah, we're still yes, recording. We're still... <laughs> oh, I'll wait till we're done recording, and I'll tell a story. <laughs> oh, okay, we got stories too. But uh, Joey, you know that uh, white guy you were talking about for Illinois? <clears throat> Yeah, he's going he's off in the first half. He has 16 points on 7 of 10 shooting. Jeez. No threes, <laughs> yeah. right? No. Uh, no doubt no threes. he's running it through us tomorrow. No threes. Yeah, he's wasting it all tonight, so that's good. Uh, fellas, that's anybody else got anything for this episode? Otherwise, we'll wrap it up. I got nothing else to give. Uh, if Riley Till gets minutes, we win. Easily. He's got I hops. Bingo. Uh, Mark it down. Also, we want to give a shout out to Alex Marinelli for uh, winning the Big Ten for his weight class. Only Hawkeye to come out on top there. He's a two seed yeah. or once? No, he's the one seed. He's the one seed at one sixty five in the NCAA tournament. Also, he Does was league get fucked somehow. He like, now, he's, he, get, he just he lost in the uh, championship. Well, are you talking about in the Big Ten championship match? Yeah. His, uh, there was a questionable hands to the face call that resulted in him, or in Northwestern's guy being awarded a point, which then helped them him tie it up and send it into sudden victory. Uh, I didn't, I couldn't see it because the men's game had gone into overtime, so and that was on right before the uh, wrestling championship, so we missed like Spencer Lee's entire match. Uh, but I, that's apparently what the uh, stink was about. But about Marinelli, he was the 200th Iowa wrestler to win a Big Ten championship. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, good for him. He'll he'll be a one seed at the NCAA's. Uh, but guys, that's all we got for this week's episode of the Hawkeye Tailgate Report. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to the show on iTunes and Podbean. Follow us on Twitter. My Twitter is. Uh, at Myers underscore Luke, Joey's is at Joe Mama two one nine six. Sam's is at S A M M M I D D. I think that's it. And uh, the sh- who the fuck came up with that? Yeah, dipshit over there. But and then the show's Twitter is at Go underscore Hawks Iowa. But guys, thanks for listening. Buy all the tickets for the women's game in Carver here for the NCAA tournament. And as always, go Hawks. Hawks by million.